Hello and welcome back to Vintage Farming. Right, we are just arriving at our production area, which is also our canola field. And uh, as you can see here to my left, it is ready to harvest. So I'm just going to pull in here. Now that we have the actual yard space, we have lots of room that we can uh, hop in here with the harvester and get the header connected. So I remember before we had to kind of hide in the forest there to, just to connect the header itself, uh, which was quite funny as well. Right, there we are. So I still, to be completely honest, I still haven't fully decided what other productions I'd like to add to our production yard here. I, I genuinely do not know what the best is. I'm going to, speaking of course, I'm going to start on this far side and try and get, because we are going to be, so here's the, here's the thing, we, we could get some canola straw, I believe, from here, but do we need it? Do we need canola straw? It might just be regular straw, and if that's the case, we have loads. So I almost think the best thing to do for this field is to uh, chop it. Now, I think there's a very, uh, I hate to say it, but there is a high chance that this will become a, a field once again, one more time. I know I've said I wanted to put in productions or animals or something, um, so I don't fully know, but this field, I mean, it's just, it is a faff with how far away it is. We could look at doing uh, some sort of uh, forest, as I've said, put a small forest area in, but there still remains a big area that I don't know... What else we put there unless it's a big mill which might be the case it doesn't have to have fields surrounding so you know what let's just uh, let's fire up the harvester here let's get it opened up let's fire it up let's just see what is what now i think we are going to be putting out a swath if i'm not mistaken oh we are chopping okay maybe we can't i'm gonna leave it to chop it was meant to be that it's chopping so I'm going to let it chop, and obviously it's not going to be a perfect application of uh, chopped whatever, but it'll be a layer of fertilizer that will save us trouble if and when, uh, I, I want to say inevitably we will, um, put in some sort of crop into this area. It doesn't have to be the whole area, but if it can be somewhat fertilized, then happy days, and it is, so that's really good. Yes, sorry, I will go back, it was just I saw it very quickly. If you look, here you can see that the new state of fertilizer is in fact uh, being applied. So I'm going to try and be very conscientious with this harvest as far as getting... Uh, okay, and that's already made a mess of it. As you can see, it's not going to... Yeah, that's <laughs> it. That is alright. Fine, fine, fine. Let's get readjusted here. But also the nice thing is we don't really have to worry too much about the various uh, swaths then if we're not doing a, a swath crop which is fine because I feel like we do lots of uh, swathing with various crops. The, the two massive fields at the actual farm are hemp and they're going to produce a swath for the hemp fibre that follows uh, which we will be bringing down here actually to uh, the uh, spinnery right there. Now I have thought as well about uh, adding in a tailor shop I've mentioned in the past, but I feel like unless we're doing sheep, I don't want to do that. It just I feel like fabric is going to be is going to sell for enough money as it is without needing to turn it into clothing. The reason I don't necessarily want to turn it into clothing, a couple of reasons. One, uh, yeah, I mean it is great money, but I just feel like the process for it is very very slow. Um, as much as I like taking productions to the next level every time that I can, I feel like with this one it might be best to just do fabric, because we're not really going to produce enough fabric to make, uh, produce clothes. I could look at the ratios of it all and see what works, but really at the end of the day I do think the best option would be to just do fabric. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. I haven't, I haven't fully decided that yet. Um, as you can see, there is still crop in, so, yeah, we've got to get one thing at a time here. Um, how's best to do this? 
No, I might go up this way. It's going to be a bit funny. I am going to try and strategically harvest this. Uh, we'll see, right? But nevertheless, we are harvesting, which is brilliant. And um, yeah, I think I think this is going to be one of those episodes where we have to look at the construction menu and look at the various productions again, because I always seem to forget <laughs> which ones they are. I know I have a sort of a list of what I want to add, but I haven't fully decided you know exactly what so we'll, we'll see we'll see we'll have a look at that in time uh, i think in the meantime though we really need to crack on uh, with this harvest so as you can see we're at 40 percent of the hopper uh, which is pretty good and i mean these uh, uh with canola and that we do tend to get a bit more out of it and it's got a bit farther in that sense but um yeah we'll just see how it goes but in the meantime let's crack on with it So we've just hit 5,000 litres in the hopper for the canola. Now, we need to be a bit smart about this because we have 5,000 litres in, but we have an oil mill right here. Now, I know, for, I know that we have the canola primarily for the cows. As you can see with power food, they require canola, soybeans, mineral feed. So I think we should keep a very small amount of that mineral feed, uh, sorry, of the um, of the canola for the cows, but we've still got loads left. I think here alone would be enough to feed the cows until the next time. And if I'm incorrect, then I'll just buy some mineral feed and uh, we'll get them sorted uh, a better way. Perhaps I can find one of those mineral feed um, mixers or something and use a wheat or something like that. We do have a big chunk of it done, but I feel as though it would be I think, are they empty empty? Yeah, they are, aren't they? So, I think for their base, let's just have a quick look here. So, for vintage, for their base, 3,500 is the right amount. I wonder, what's the ratio for canola? Hmm. It would be good. It would be good. But maybe we should save the oil for hemp and other products. Maybe we'll do that instead. Yeah. Yeah. Go on then. All right. Let's head back to the farm and collect the truck. There we are. And we'll see you back in the field. All right. This should be good about here. Yeah. I. So I've had it. Probably I had a reason back when I first drilled this uh, canola in. Two reasons probably why I did it in this area. One, canola, no straw. That's probably why, because it's so far out. Two, canola turned to oil, which is why I had the oil mill here as well. Not just why I had the oil mill here, but I thought it was a good opportunity. But I think I did end up doing canola for the cows. So the best thing to do would be to save, or at least harvest all of the canola before we start giving it to mills or cows or whatever it needs to go to, so that we can actually sort of have a really good idea of how much we have. Because I don't want to just go and, yeah, put it all in the oil mill to find out that we need it all uh, for the precious cows, which is the whole reason that we drilled canola in the first place. But nevertheless, at least we are harvesting it, and we do have 5,000 litres now, which, as I say, is just a bit more than a full uh, load in the cow barn, because we, we don't want to uh, just give them canola. Of course, they have other things that need giving to them. Uh, but we have all those items of growing potatoes in the greenhouse. We've got, um, well, we've got silage, of course, we've got loads of silage, and uh, we've got loads of straw. Well, hay, yeah, sorry, hay. 
Uh, but we've got loads of straw as well. And uh, as far as hay, I mean, I think we'll be all right. Um, we can always uh, we can always make some more. I still want to look into a bigger area for grass near the farm. Um, again, this area, I wouldn't want to do grass. It would be less maintenance. Well, no, it would be way more work. I think, unless we have a proper, unless we bring all of our uh, grass kit down here, but um, but I don't know if we want to do that. Do we want to do that? Maybe we do. Hang on a minute. All right, hold on. Let me think of this out loud. So if we were to turn this area, because okay, if we want silage, we can get silage. That's fine. But that's the other thing, right? If we have grass here, then we have to consider the fact that we might come down here for silage. Which, if we're using a loading wagon, I can a be bothered with that. Because that's 8,000 meters of grass at a time. We produce tens of thousands, if not 100,000 meters of grass. <laughs> so that's a lot of carting, no thank you. Uh, but for hay bale making, not a terrible idea but we would still have to transport a bit. So I am a bit uh, uncertain of how, to, of how to go about it. I have mentioned a small and narrow, longer field, and there are a few nearby, but actually quite a few nearby to us. So I might just wait and see what comes up, but I do also have to double check our hay situation and, and see how far off we are from needing hay before we get all crazy and buying new fields, because I think Production uh, would be quite good as well, or at least the plans for one, because we don't have anything to put in a new production just yet. But right, I think the best thing to do is to uh, crack on with this harvest and uh, wrap up the time lapse. save canola for the cows as I do if I remember correctly that is the whole reason that I drilled canola in the first place uh, at all because the other options for us are legume straw uh, which I wouldn't mind doing again but if I'm not mistaken that's uh, soybeans but again I didn't want to have to deal with any straw from or over here so we might do uh, a legume in the future near the farm and, uh, and then we can use legume straw for the cows instead. Um, it still goes as far, and I think you produce more of it. So really, we are losing out, giving the cows this canola versus using a different kind of straw. But uh, it's all right. It's really all right. We'll give them what they need, and if we have leftover, then we can bring it down to the factory here and get uh, canola oil made. But the main focus is absolutely on hemp. I really want to, yeah, like, as you know, I've got two massive fields of hemp, and uh, those truly are the uh, the priority right now for both of these productions, actually, because uh, we have the, oh, wow, did all right, the fertilizing here did all right, but yes, we have the spinnery and the oil mill, both of which uh, will take uh, one of the versions of hemp, whether it's the actual seed or the, the remains of it, so the fibre, so to say, uh, out of these two, which is, yeah, again, massive. And I would like to potentially branch out even further, and I've mentioned this before. The, the thing is, too, there's a little forest here, 
which I don't really want to pay money for a forest when we have space to create our own for, and that's a big, big, much bigger forest area than I'd like. But I was having to think while I was harvesting, and it doesn't make sense to have this little area here. So what we could do in this area is maybe put a few trees, and uh, yeah, sort of, because, uh, I mean, the yard kind of starts here, so if we bring this out here, like maybe another meter or so, um, meter or two, and then the rest can go trees as kind of a lining for this area, kind of a nice entrance way to our production yard, and then uh, over here could be another production, because it's quite flat. This area here is relatively flat, um, so I think this would be good for another production in just kind of right here. And then it's also level with that part of the yard, so it can go straight across. And then if we did want to put a crop in, we have a nice, long, narrow rectangle here that we can put crop in. And then in this corner here, we could put, because as you can see, it looks a bit, it's a bit um, hilly. There's a bit of a hill. It doesn't quite sit as flat. And then we could put some more trees, like our actual pro proper sort of forestry area could go along here. Not a bad shout. Now, I do just want to see, do I have that tool enabled? Do I have? I do. So this is the hand plant uh, sapling mod. Absolutely brilliant mod. We can just stick it in anywhere in this area here eventually. And we can hand uh, plant trees, which is really, really nice. So, and I've used it before, and I'll use it again, because it's amazing. Um, while we're here, let's go into factories, as we always do. I do love this, though. I do love looking at all the potentials of things we can build. Um, let's see. So we do have the grain mill. And it's a big one. It's a big production, that's for certain. Um, and there's only certain grain that can be used. So we need, do need to look into that. But it is uh, uh, something we can afford. But yeah, 64,000 when it should be 60. See how much flat... It's about 2,000 pounds cheaper to put it here than over here because of that hill. But as you can see, all of this... Yeah, it gets, yeah, it's, none of it's really flat, but <laughs> more flat than other places. Um, the hops brewery would be cool, but we are so far out from that, uh, it would just be a waste, yeah. And it's not a massive building, so it can go elsewhere. Um, juice factory, no. Slaughterhouse, maybe, but not at this point. The oil mill, we have. We have the spinnery, we have those two. The old winery. Yeah, I don't think we'll be doing wine. Now, this is the grain mill that I would want. Much, much better than the other one because of all of the various crops that we can produce. Or use, rather. So, if I can read that, we've got sorghum, oat, millet, barley, rice, uh, something I can't read, buckwheat, corn, rye, and wheat, I imagine. Yeah, as... And corn as well. We can make cornmeal, something with, chi I think, chickpeas. And there's other things in there as well. So this would be the grain mill that we would opt for. And, uh, yeah, as you can see, it's it would probably be best place. Well, once we get uh, the um, uh, zone markers as well, we could put this, like, kind of like that. Oh, that would be so good. That would be so good. We don't have any of those crops, though. See, this is what I mean. By the time we have those crops, then we... Then, I don't know, like, we should... You know what I mean? That's why I'm a bit confused about what to do with this space, because I don't want to place something we can't use straight away, but we could use the space that the production would go to make more crops, so it's kind of a catch-22, if you will. Uh, that's a nice, uh, nice production there as well. Nice long production, but yes. Definitely... Fishing resort. Okay, so I think grain mill is the next big one. I think this this mill will be the next big one. I uh, just need to remember that. So if I ever ask again, hmm, what should we do? Chips and snacks. Huh. That's well, like crisps and that. Ah, cool. Ah, nachi chip. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Uh, maybe that's an option then too, but what are these things? These are greenhouse productions. Mushies, we've got some... Don't know what that is. I look like buck choy or something. I don't know. Poppy. Blimey, look at all that. And tons of different wheat as well. 
Is that hot peppers? Sage? Cheese? Is that t uh, apple or tomato? Is that tomato? Wow, okay, this is a cool factory. I think this is something that we could add as well. I will look into that further later, but there's so many productions, or so many things you can bring to it. Lavender products is 250, it's a very expensive building. Very beautiful building. A sauce factory. Have I just not seen this? I mean, we don't have anything we need for the sauce, but that's fine. Uh, you're not going to make any hemp sauce, are you? No, unfortunately not. Pellets production. So that's as well another thing. Uh, heating plant. And uh, yeah, so that is... There is another old general mill, which I always thought looked very cool. The only problem is it just, it's not, it's not as practical as having the other ones. If we didn't have, if, if we needed one production, it would be this. Absolutely amazing. Because it does all the things, but it only does a small amount of all the things, which is frustrating as well. Other than that, that's pretty much it. If we need an old sugar mill, this would be the one, because it just looks so cool. But we're not, we're not faffing with sugar uh, this time around. Or if we do, it will be on a smaller scale. Because or we'll just buy it and not make sugar in. Yeah, if we need to use it for something. Alright. Let's very quickly, before we crack on here. I just want to see. Productions. Where is the... Of course I've lost it. Nope, 70,000. I won't forget. Okay, so we've got nothing out the back, which is very brilliant. Let's put it on the flat. Oh, we don't really have... Okay. So you can see in the front there, there's nothing out the back. So that's good. Alright, so it would go like this beautifully. And uh, we just have to be conscientious of where the pallets spawn, which is there. Hmm, that might be a bit tight to get in. But no, that's really the best way it could go as well. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I think that should be alright. Because we can drive through there. That's lots of room. Loads of room to get through. And, uh, yeah. Even if it's at an angle, it doesn't have to be perfectly level as well. So, yeah, like that might be the best thing, really. Um, I'm not going to place it now. Just because we don't fully know what's going on. Um, so, in the meantime, I think what we should do is take... Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll probably take this kit back. I can't think of July, July needing anything else. Unless we put a crop in here. Oh no. Alright, let's have a look then. Let's have a look at our options. We've got... N okay, we can put in uh, soybeans. Oh, so we can put in some soybeans. Maybe that would be... A good thing to do. Because then we'll get our legume. And we'll get legumes and we'll get legume straw. But again, it's the faff of putting it in. Oh, unbelievable. Well, we don't have anything we can put in a mill yet anyways. And we probably won't for a while. So you know what? The fact that this is this will be grown and harvested in the winter. Weird. All the way through December, I suppose. Makes sense, sort of. Uh, well, that will give us something to do in January, at least. Uh, so you know what? That's the plan. We've got a new plan. We've got a... And, I mean, it's a fairly lovely day. It's cloudy, yes. But, I mean, in the grand scheme of the day, it's, uh, it's alright. You know, we've got, it's only 10am, we've got loads of time. So I think that's what we're going to do. I know, I know, I literally just finished saying about how much of a faff all of that is. But I think, um, I think let's spend some time in this field, this episode. So we're going to drill in soybeans. So we do need to, we can, we can worry about fertilising later. We do have one application which is amazing. I'm very pleased I did that. But before we actually drill in, I, I think I'm going to, um, I might put some trees. Or at least lay out where I'd like to put some trees. Anyways, let's take this kit back to the farm. We'll take the truck back to the farm and we'll see you back here with the drill. Alright, well, as you can see, we are back in the field. However, we are cultivating first. Well, I have a cosplay helper helping, uh, which is why cosplay is amazing. So they can tend to that while I sort everything else out. Uh, but yes, I do always forget that I don't have a direct drill on this series. And uh, before anyone comments and says, get one, 
Someone already has, and I've told them in the comments why I don't, and I've said before why I don't have one as well. The only vintage type direct seed drills that are available are about five meters wide, but they cannot be folded up. It makes getting in and out of the farm impossible, uh, unless you're, I don't know, throwing it over the fence, which you shouldn't be doing, or shouldn't be able to do. Uh, anyway, so that's why we don't have a direct drill on this series. If, for whatever reason, or in some, some way or somehow, somebody does find and come across a direct seed drill that is vintage and six meters uh, and can be folded, or even five meters it can be folded, please share it with me, because I'd love to uh, use it. Right, but that doesn't exist at the moment, so we will crack on the way we are cracking on. And plus, this cultivator is fairly large. Course play helps, gets it done really quickly anyways. The other thing we have is the drill here. And uh, at six meters, <clears throat> I'm not too, uh, too worried about it at all. Right, the other thing we have to do... So I've got the... Harvester there, so that's all good. Uh, the other thing we have to do is give the cows some canola. And they do actually need more than just canola. They need some other food as well. <clears throat> so, we'll start with canola, as you can see here. They need... Uh, well, they need thir about 3,500 litres. So, let's get that to about... Just about 6,000. And unload just going to watch the numbers there so we get it to about 6,000. Now that should be... Ooh, nearly. We'll do it very quickly. Nice. That's fine. Perfect. So I'm going to put the... Re oh, wow. Exactly. 5,660. I'm going to put the rest in here because what I'm going to do while I wait for the helper to cultivate that field is tend to the cows. I do also want to look into the logistics of planting some trees down there as well. Um, I probably should have done that before cultivating, but whatever, it's fine. It, those areas, the small, the very small areas that the helper is cultivating, which we will just check very quickly on the edges there, that you can see that small triangle and over there, will cultivate, but we might not drill it. So yeah, just wanted to confirm that with ya, let you know. Okay, let's go over here. We need some uh, silage from the fermentation silo. <coughs> right, and go to silage. We might as well load up as much as we can. Actually, no, we don't need it full. That should be fine. Let's just check. Uh, yeah, so they do require... 13,500 litres, so... Yeah, I suppose we could put a very small amount more. That's perfect there. Probably more than they need, but that's alright. Uh, we also need to give them some roughage, which will be hay. And uh, yes, we will have a look at our hay situation. Right, so we do have six bales, and we need to give them one. We'll check in just a moment. Let's have a check and see. 2,000 they need, yeah, so maybe two bales. And then the rest can be spuds, potatoes. Oh my, that's about 6,000. Oh no, here is perfect. That's perfect. That is actually perfect. <laughs> Wicked, that. Right, um, the next thing we need is a roughage. So, what did I say? Two bales. Yeah, go on then. Two. Oh wow, why am I sprinting for some reason? Such a fast farmer. <laughs> right, let's get this fired up. Um, yeah, these bales are 65, so they could get away with one. I think I'll just do the one for now, actually, because we do only have the six. And uh, we'll put more, more potatoes in, because potatoes are fairly easy to sort with and sort out, I guess. Right, get that in there. Hello. Now our total food capacity in here is 35,000 or so. So right now we are at 25, which means something's a bit missing. All oh, right, this is short by about 1,500. 
So yeah, just potatoes. So about 10,000 litres of spuds. Now, I don't think we need this for that. I think we can actually load them directly into the truck. So I'm going to try that. Going to try that. Where is our... Right. Potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. Spawn. Ten. Nope, just ten. Okay. Brilliant. So now that we've spawned out ten... Oh, great amount of dairy sales. Does that include milk, then? Because we have loads of milk. It doesn't. Bugger. What are you selling at dairy sales? Dunno. It's not bloody milk, though, is it? <coughs> Must be cheese or something. Anyways. Here are... Eight pallets. Now, can I fill these up from here? I cannot. Can I pick them up? Oh, I can. That's a bit cheeky, but you know what? With ten pallets, I think I might just, yeah, put them in there like that. Oh, right, you have to hold them. That's a bit annoying. Okay, yeah, let's spin round. So I also have just noticed that we have rain on the forecast. Now, when is that going to happen? It's at least three hours away. Let's have a check. Hey, I can pick these up without super strength, so that's fine. But I have to hold them above. That's a bit annoying. Here, let's check the weather. Hello, weather. Where are you? Uh, 5, 6, 5 p.m. We've got loads of time. All right, I'm going to get these spuds loaded into here. I'll get all 10,000 litres loaded in, and we'll see you back in the cows. Okay, here we are with our truck full of potatoes. Now, I do, I, I spawned 10 pallets, and only 8 initially showed up, and I had to go and spawn a couple more, but I feel like the number went down 10,000 litres, but there were only 8 pallets, so I, I have to double check that, I think. Oh, they're full up. They needed not that much. Oh, I thought this was 34,000, but it's 33,750. Well, that's fine. That's pretty much the same, I guess. But, uh, yeah, the way that everything... Uh, so there's more moisture food than there, than there should be roughage. So that's the difference. There should be about 7,000 litres of potatoes to 10,000 roughage. So I've kind of split those up. But uh, I suppose we can just leave this... I'll just drive it out. Right there. Brilliant. Now... As I said, I was going to focus on that other area, so maybe... So I don't think we'll be drilling soybeans in this episode, which is fine. But we are definitely... Wow, definitely getting on here. Yeah, I don't I don't think we'll be doing that, but I, what I would like to do is... Let the helper finish. I'll just get out of your way. Bye-bye, helper. Actually, you know what? Let's have a look in the sale. This is one of the uh, most... I didn't really need it, and I still kind of don't purchases that I've ever bought. At least on this series. And it was in the sale, which is a very rare thing. Bloody hell, what is that? This machine can collect sugar beets from the ground and tip them into trailers. Wow. So, it's got decent hours on. Uh, it's from the same base as the Belarus that we do have. This this mod pack is mental. The MTZ pack. The stuff they have is very Frankenstein. Like, what is that? Um, 35... Okay, so that's fine. 4.2 4 meters. That's relatively low. Once you get the sugar beets from the ground... Okay, so you okay, so you pull them out. Then you... Okay. 2 kPa. Wait a minute. Is that... The working speed is 2... <laughs> Look at this thing. That's mental. You know, I'd love to use this, but I really, really don't think I would at the same time. It's cool, and it's very, I guess, practical for what it is. But we've got the greenhouse. If we didn't have the greenhouse, I would consider switching to beets and doing this, but it's just not... Yeah, that's mental, that. Looks kind of cool, I suppose. Uh, anyways, nothing <laughs> nothing for us there, uh, unfortunately. Right, so I think... Right, I'd have to go to the shop to buy some trees. But I still like the idea here. You know what, let's do this then first. Let's go into construction. Uh, landscaping. Painting. Let's match up. Now, there are some really nice... I kind of wish I had gone for this instead. 
for this area, but you know what? The gravel just, it does look quite good. That's the same, yeah, okay, good, good. It does look good, I have to admit. Now, trees along here and having an entrance here would be good, I think. So we'll get that. That's about, I don't know how, how wide that is. We want to come very natural. So if we come down like that, that's a lot more than I kind of wanted, but that's fine. But the nice thing here is I haven't put a path in yet. So now's the opportunity to do just that. Look at that. Lovely. Lovely jubbly. So normally, th where you go, mate? Oh, he's doing that small bit. Mm, that's fine. You really? <laughs> I've confused the helper so much. Are you going to cultivate where I haven't... I think I've just completely blindsided the helper here. <laughs> Sorry, it's I, I just uh, funny to watch. Alright, bugger off. I'm busy trying to do something here. Oi, what are you doing? That's not... What, what are you doing? Stop it. Oh, I've fully confused the helper here. I've got them into... Oh, you meant... Yeah, you've left the course. <laughs> oh, my. Have I ever confused them? Okay, might as well just get this. I'm probably going to... Yeah. There we go. Probably going to gravel that anyways, but... Bloody hell. Can you, can you believe that? Unbelievable. Always something, isn't it? Right, now let's... Uh, we need to see the course here. Ah. Oh, what have I done? can clearly see where the deviation has begun. So let's go to nearest and play. And let them crack on. I think. Um, okay. Right, we need to see the full course here. So, I think if we want to go that way... Ah, there we go. I think... Nearest. So, if we go like this... and start it... And then change that back to nearest. Will it just carry on here? Nice! I love that. I love that so much. That's brilliant. Okay. As you were. And as we were. What were we even doing? Uh, this area here as well. I think... I don't want to gravel all the way. But I do want to have some gravel before... Yeah, because trees up to... Oh, no. Can't put trees here. Bloody power lines are there. How have I just thought of that? Okay. Um, right. Well, that kind of changes this then. But not, not problematic. We will just simply make our path into here. Uh, from here. There we go. This is one thing I really love about this series. Is... Um, is that this sort of, uh, the, these sort of things, I don't know, they're little design things. I feel like Vintage is very free flow in that sense. There's no, like, rush, there's no, but all of my series are fairly chill, I guess, and relaxed. Um, but this one in particular just has a nice vibe to it. You know, you can just come in, you just hang out, right? You can just relax and do some vintage farming. It's just nice. It's just nice. <laughs> oh, blimey. I feel like bloody Bob Ross here. Nice little bush there. Yeah, yeah. British Bob Ross. <laughs> Just joking. Okay. I think that's fine. Here, we'll make it more of a natural... Very natural path. Now... Oh, bloody hell. What trees are going to go there? I think this might have to be... We've kind of lost our na natural look. Okay, that's fine. Maybe something like that. And then, yeah, this is kind of more open, so ready to accept, you know, vehicles coming in from this direction. 
and uh, we probably need a bit of a, an entrance path here as well. So I wonder if it would be just smart to take this just straight down, but then we want to do trees. So, yes. Where's the helper gone? Oh, no. Hmm. Maybe we should just leave that for now. I don't want to put trees in yet, because um, one, we have to go and collect them from the shop first. But I'd also like to plan out what I'm going to do. Because this area here, if we just gravel this first part again, as we did on the other side, and then put some trees, it should be fine. But let's fix this helper up here. Oh my. See? These trees are the devil. <laughs> right, you know what I'm going to do? I think as a bit of a farewell to the episode, I'm just going to do this myself. Just get the very last of the cultivating completed. This way, the next time we fire up again uh, with, the, with the next episode, we'll get straight into the drilling. Uh, we can get that done. Uh, we can focus on where maybe where the trees will go. And then in the time after that, uh, we'll be looking at harvesting some hemp as well. Which is very exciting. So, yes, I will just do this myself, get it done, and then the next time, the next episode, we can just get straight in with the drilling. So, as always, thank you so much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed this episode. I know the uh, last little bit of it here has been a bit um, sort of planning and decorating, decorating and landscaping and all that, but uh, and feeding, of course, the cows need to eat. Um, but again, it's just part of the uh, part of the series, and I really enjoy the slow pace and chill the vibes of vintage. So I hope you're enjoying them as well. If you are, cheeky thumbs up always does help out the channel, and uh, please subscribe. So until the next one, please do take care, and bye for now.